This video is going through um, a couple of application questions for communication matrices from our notes. Okay, so this first example here is an adapted um, exam question. So mostly the same as what appeared in an exam two in 2016. So a travel company has five employees, Amara, Ben, Cheng, Dana, and Elka. And the company allows each employee to send a direct message to another employee only as shown in the communication matrix below. So a reminder with our communication matrices, the way we're reading them is in from the left and then up to the top. So what that means is if I'm reading in from the left up to the top, that the one here in that row two column one tells me, so in row two column one, that tells me that B or Ben can communicate directly with Amara A. So we need to remember that when we're, um, when we're reading them. And so the first thing that we're asked to do here is to construct a diagram to show the direct communication links between the employees. So remember with our diagrams, we want to have set up um, a location or um, a vertex for each of those people. So we're going to need five of those and have them labeled as they're labeled in the matrix. And then we're going to use arrows to show that direct communication. And we're only going to show an arrow if there is a one as we read in and up for each person. So unfortunately, there's no um, neat way necessarily to do this. It is a little bit messy as we go. Um, but what we want to do is just start working our way across a row. So I'm going to concentrate on Amara and who she can communicate with. So you'll notice there's a zero in the Amara to Amara because it doesn't make sense that she would need to communicate with herself. So there's a zero there. It's called a redundant link. But we can see that Amara can talk directly to uh, Ben. So we can put an arrow to Ben. Can talk directly to Cheng, to Dana, and to Alki. Now, if we then go and look at Ben and who he can speak to. So Ben can also talk to Amara. So we need an arrow going the opposite direction from B to A. Ben can talk to Cheng. And that's it. If we now look at Cheng, Cheng can talk to Amara. So an arrow going the opposite direction. Can also talk to Ben. So again, arrow in the opposite direction, and Chen can talk to Dana. If we now look at Dana, Dana can talk to Ben. So we might do that on the outside. And Dana can talk to Elki. So they traditionally end up straight lines most of the time, but they don't have to be. You just draw them in a way so that you can see what's going on. And you can draw through the middle. It doesn't have to um, have them all drawn uncrossed. And finally, Elki. Elki can communicate with Dana. It's the only connection Elki has. And so here, part B is now asking, well, who can Dana send a direct message? So Dana can send a direct message to Elki and to Ben. So we want to make sure we're writing out the names that we're given there. I'm sorry, Elka. Not the letters. It's really important that you are doing it as the names. So always putting your answer back into the context of the question you've been given. Part C is then asking us to find M squared, the matrix representing the two-step communication links. So remember a two-step communication link, if we use the diagram as a quick example, means that um, Elki can speak to um, Ben by two steps. So Elki can communicate with Dana and Dana can communicate with Ben. So therefore, whilst Elka can't directly communicate with Ben, she can get a message to Ben in two steps via Dana. So if we go now and create that communication matrix for two steps, 
we are literally taking our one step matrix and squaring it and we are always doing that using our calculator. So first up we need to put in our matrix, our one step matrix and it is a five by five so you definitely want to use that template where you get to choose and then it's a matter of going through and putting in those values as they were given to us in that M matrix or the one step matrix. So just taking your time, making sure you're not missing any. So there's our one step. And to get our two step, we're going to take that power of two and square it. So we can see there we've got lots of additional pathways. So we're going to write that down on our page now. Okay, and there's our two-step matrix. So D, Cheng needs to send a message to Elka but cannot do this directly. Write down the names of the employees who can send the message from Cheng to Elka directly. So here we are being asked to find all of the two-step um, pathways or communication pathways um, from Cheng to Elka, so from C to E. And so if we look at our matrix, um, our two-step matrix here, from C, so A, B, C, to E, we have two possible two-step pathways. This is where it becomes easier to go back to our diagram to see, well, what were those two pathways? So remember, we're going from Cheng to Elka. And looking at our diagram here, well, Cheng can speak to Dana, who can speak to Elka. So there's one. Cheng can also speak directly to Amara, who can speak to Elka. And there's our second pathway. And so again, we want to make sure that we are writing those down. So Cheng to uh, Amara and Cheng to Dana. Who are the employees? Amara and Dana. So that's our answer there. Okay, so you can write down the pathway, but remembering always make sure you're checking the question and what is it they're asking you for, put it back into the context. So using the names Amara and Dana. Part E, find the total number of employees that Ben can communicate with through a maximum of two steps. So if we look at the two step matrix that we have here, just above, and we concentrate this time on Ben. So according to this, Ben can talk to Amara, himself, to Cheng, to Dana, and to Elka, all via two steps. So we don't even need to go back and consider the one step matrix, but if that wasn't the case for Ben, we would also consider in the one step, how many people could he communicate with? And so in total, we can see he can communicate with every other person, which means he can communicate with four of the um, employees. Our second example here from 2017 is a multiple choice question. And so the matrix below shows how five people, Alan, Bevan, Charlie, Drew and Esther, can communicate with each other. And again, remember we are reading in and up as we're reading our matrix here. And so Esther wants to send a message to Bevan. Which of the following shows the order of people through which this message is sent? So if we have a look here, we can see there's very few people who can communicate with, with each other. And if we look at Esther, Esther only has one person that she can communicate with, and that is Charlie. So Esther can communicate with Charlie. If we then say, well, who can Charlie communicate with in this one-step matrix? So Charlie can communicate with either Drew or Esther. Now there's no point passing the message back to Esther, so he needs to pass the message on to Drew because we want the message to keep going through this chain 
until we get to uh, Bevan. So if Charlie's communicated with Drew, who can Drew communicate with? Well, Drew can communicate with Alan or with Charlie. Again, we don't want to pass the message back, so Drew can pass the message to Alan. We then look at Alan. Alan can communicate with Bevan and Drew. Again, don't want to pass the message back. And more importantly, we want this message to get to Bevan. So that is our end goal. And so now if we consider, well, out of the options that we have, we want to see that chain. So Esther to Charlie to Drew um, to Alan and then finally to Bevan. And we can see that we have that here in option E. The final example here from last year, from 2020, again, a multiple choice question. So this time we have a diagram showing the direct communication links between Sam, Ty, Umi and Vera. And for example, just a reminder, the arrow from Umi to Vera represents that Umi can communicate directly with Vera. And you'll notice here there's the two lines showing the different directions. And so the question is actually asking us what could be a communication matrix that would represent that information. So the options are to have a look and see where the differences are and try and knock out some of the options. Or we could just really quickly draw up what that communication matrix should look like. And so even if we just started off, so making sure we've got it in the order that they've got it in the answers, S, T, U, V. So we're not then trying to work out um, what's happening if we've done it in a different order. So if we look at just Sam, Sam can communicate with Ty and Sam can communicate with Vera. So we're going to have a one with Ty, doesn't communicate with Yumi, but does with Vera. If we then look at Ty, Ty can communicate with Vera only. That's the only option for Ty. So no Sam, not to himself, no Yumi, and just Vera. Yumi, can communicate with Ty and with Vera. So again, no Sam, yes for Ty, not herself, and with Vera. And finally, Vera can communicate with Sam, with Ty, and with Yumi. So with Sam, Ty, and Yumi, and not herself. So then we're looking for which of the options matches that exactly. And so when we look at the five that we've got there, we can see that D gives us the correct answer. So you can see sometimes the questions are very much use a matrix form or use a diagram form, but it's important that you are able to read both formats and know what is going to offer you what benefits you're more likely to see these questions in an exam too. So I encourage you to have a look for some of those questions um, and make sure that if you find a good one that comes up, um, that you add that into your bound reference with some additional notes. Thanks.